security challenges, in our opinion, seem to have overwhelmed our security institutions. The governors are supposed to be the state's security officers of their state. There is need for us to at least engage the traditional rulers. We need to do something about our porous borders. We have to run it from the unit level to the world level to the local government to stay. Mr. President, the importance of today for us is for us to take action. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have been. The train ran after the first wave of attacks. In reaction to Abuja Kaduna train attack, Senate calls for a declaration of full-fledged war against bandits and terrorists. The people of this country are a bit short change. And Senate directs pay TV service providers in Nigeria to revert to pay-per-view model. A warm welcome to the program Inside the Senate. I am Husaina Amina Aboki. Reactions have continued to trail the attack of the Abuja Kaduna train by terrorists on Monday the 28th of March 2022. The Senate rose with one voice to condemn the action, calling for sustained bombardment by the army to end banditry and terrorism. Details of the various contributions to the matter, alongside the consideration of other bills and motion, form part of our package. The program concludes with reports of visits to the Senate President, committee activities, as well as oversight visits. Stay tuned for details after the break. Don't go away. The Senate will send a message to the President to reap opportunities from that Today is a matter of urgent public importance. And we are aware that when this particular motion comes up, for a longer term, development arrives to second the motion. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Welcome back. High point of plenary on Tuesday the 29th of March 2022 was a motion on the terrorist attack on a Kaduna-bound train from Abuja on Monday the 28th of March 2022 alongside others in various parts of the state. For details from plenary, let's take our first report as compiled and presented from our studio. The Senate notes that the terrorists have in recent times stepped up attack. The issue was brought under matters of urgent public importance by Senator Ubasani who disclosed that the attack occurred around 8 p.m. that day with 970 passengers on board the train. The train derailed after the first wave of attacks. Grenades and RPG were used. They ran bullets on all the coaches. Some passengers were killed, while many sustained bullet wounds. There are reports that some of the passengers were abducted. Senators gave account of the dastardly act perpetrated by the terrorists during the attack. One of the women seated with a baby in her arms in that ill-fated train was calling for mercy. She had an aged mother by her side and was pleading that she came only for medical attention. She brought the mother on medical attention in Abuja, and that was what brought them here. And she was pleading for mercy. Instead of giving mercy, Mr. President, she had her head shattered. Kaduna has become the new theater. And Kaduna is where the highest military institutions are housed. Mr. President, I would want to believe that by now, there would have been enough time for serious action to have been taken. Because this bandit, from all the attacks, seems they are localized in a particular place. In the whole country, the issue of Kaduna State is the worst. I did mention this some other time. I said all of us sit here. One day, they will finish us. They will finish us because they will start looking after us, running after us. Terrorists have declared war against Nigeria, and I think it is time for Nigeria to declare war 
against this terrorist. I think it is time for this terrorist to be seriously taken as a national security threat. One of the resolutions adopted was to urge the army and air force to carry out sustained bombardment of terrorist enclave with a view to flushing them out and restoring peace in the land. Letter from Mr. President. Same day, President Muhammadu Buhari in a letter to the Senate requested Senate's consideration and passage of the National Senior Secondary Commission Bill 2022. The National Senior Secondary School Education Commission Bill 2021 seeks to set and enforce standards and provide federal government intervention towards the repositioning of senior secondary education in Nigeria. While hoping that this submission will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the Senate, please, the single Senate President, accept, please accept the single Senate President assurance of my highest consideration. You are sincerely, Muhammad Buhari. Another of the President's letter was seeking consideration of the Federal University of Health Sciences Bill 2021. The Federal University of Health Sciences, or TUPO, Benway State Bill 2021, seeks to establish Federal University of Health Sciences, or TUPO, Benway State, while hoping that this submission will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the Senate. Please accept the single Senate President, the assurances of my highest consideration. You are sincerely, Muhammad Buhari. On this very important issue of public interest. Another matter presented for deliberation by the Senate was a motion on the tariff hike by pay TV service providers in Nigeria. A motion on this titled Nigerians dumbfounded and outraged over pay TV tariff hike, demand for pay per view subscription model. It was sponsored by Senator Abba Muru. This was on Wednesday, the 30th of March 2022. As usual, without recourse to the economic situation, of the country, Multi Choice has again raised the cost of its DSTV and GoTV bundles, stating them as follows DSTV Premium 21,000, DSTV Compact Plus 14,250, Compact 9,000. The motion was debated. I think it's high time we stand up firmly and face this uh, institution or this company to make sure that we protect the interests of Nigerians. The people of this country are being be shortchanged by the TV service providers in this country. There is no regulation at all. These people increase the fees payable on this service at reckless abandon. There should be a system where there will be pay-per-view one of the resolutions adopted on the motion was to urge the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy as well as the Nigerian Communications Commission NCC to direct all pay TV providers to introduce the pay per view model of subscription as against the monthly prepaid model presently in place. Still last week, the National Biosafety Management Agency Act 2015 Amendment Bill 2022 was also presented for second reading by the Senate leader. The specific policy intent of the principal act for which this bill seeks to amend, was to regulate, control, and limit any threat to public health or the environment. This is because so far there has not been any conclusive findings regarding the overall safety of GMOs, to human life, and the environment. Debates were in favor of the bill following which it scaled second reading and referred to the Committee on Science and Technology to report back in four weeks. Those were reports from plenary in the Senate last week. Let's now take a short break for our notebook segment. Don't go away. The leadership of the Senate comprises two presiding officers and eight principal officers. The presiding officers are President of the Senate, and Deputy President of the Senate. The principal officers are Majority Leader of the Senate, Deputy Majority Leader, Minority Leader, Deputy Minority Leader, Senate Whip, Deputy Senate Whip, Minority Whip, and Deputy Minority Whip. They all work in synergy with one another for the smooth running of the Senate. The only way out of the pandemic 
It's for the population to observe the recommended measures advised by the NCDC, the Senate Committees on Health and Primary Health Care and Communicable Diseases will continue to engage with the Federal Ministry of Health and the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Welcome back. From the Senate President's office was an assurance of a conducive working environment for parliamentary staff. Senate President Ahmed Lawan gave the assurance when the leadership of the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, Pasan, paid him a courtesy call. We want you to be happy. We want a stable working environment. We want a very peaceful uh, working environment. We want a very supportive working environment for you because that is what will make us uh, productive as members of the National Assembly. Speaking earlier, the Pasan president used the opportunity to press home their demands. The union is soliciting the support of the Senate president and conversing for the unification of the salary structure for all legislative workers in the country and unified condition of service as it is applicable to the National Assembly. In the committee room, the Joint Senate Committee on Petroleum Resources and Gas was on duty Tuesday the 29th of March 2022 in an interactive session with stakeholders over some of the challenges facing the Nigerian petroleum sector. These challenges were highlighted by the chairman in his opening remarks. Especially with the increase in prices of crude internationally and the fact that we still have to bring in refined petroleum products that is weighing down on the uh, limited uh, uh, revenue the government is generating because there is an increase in the price of crude and we are still subsidizing. There has to be a way out. The group managing director of NNPC responded. Today, there is close to 4 million barrels of global shortfall in supply of crude oil into the market. This means that prices will remain at this relatively high level, and perhaps, you know, if the situation, the geopolitical issues are not resolved quickly, uh, the prices could actually escalate uh, further. But for us here, we have a different problem. It would have been a, a position of, of benefit for us as a country. And unfortunately, we are not in position to take advantage of these high prices because we are unable to produce uh, crude oil in the country today. On the adulterated petroleum products allegedly imported into Nigeria, the GMD had this to say. We have engaged the, the suppliers. We have also traced it to the root supplier, which is Litasco, as you all may know. Litasco is, in, uh, is, a, is a company wholly owned by the uh, by, by, by Russians. We are transferring all the liabilities to the supplier where all the products that we have quarantined and some other incidental uh, situations that, uh, that has arisen. And our intervention helped because even, even products on trucks were quarantined and taken into, into storage. Thereafter, comments were taken from some committee members. GMD, I, every time, every time I, I listen to you, I listen to you with so much uh, rapt attention because um, because of your passion and your knowledge of your industry. But it's quite uh, it's quite unfortunate that um, you found yourself in this um, in these shoes and you are equally rising up to the occasion. For the first time. I, in my long service or public service, this is the first time that uh, you have a chief executive who will lay the facts as they are. And I think that it's 50% of the problem solved. Because when you go to see a doctor and they are able to diagnose um, what the issue is, then they know what to apply. I will also want to, NMPC, to, to also look at emphasis of. Uh, the preparation that is in the border control. Our neighbors know the international oil price and know what the oils are about. And when NNPC has no control over what goes into, the, into our neighboring countries, our neighboring uh, the borders, uh, it calls for attention. The rest of the meeting was held behind closed doors. Director refining and, and petrochemical and also to the laptop. 
Earlier on Monday, the 28th of March 2022, the Committee on Trade and Investment and Diaspora and NGOs hosted stakeholders to a public hearing to deliberate on the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, Amendment Bill 2022, particularly as it affects registration of NGOs in Nigeria. The report of this, alongside others, are presented from our studio. I'm here to represent the Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Declaring the hearing open, Senate President, who was represented by the Senate Minority Whip, Senator Philip Aduda, said the amendment would encourage more private investment in Nigeria for the improvement of our GDP. This is also in the continuation of our desire to contribute our quota to meeting the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians as it relates to Mr. President's change agenda. Stakeholders then took over the floor to make presentations for or against the amendment. The proposed uh, uh, B as it stands interferes with the right of association, association and the right of assembly of Nigerian citizens. And so if there is any law that is supposed to be made to limit this right by introducing an interim manager or a trustee, in that sense it will, it will hinder this right of Nigerian citizens. Section 839 of Kama should be set aside. Reasons. It negates section 46, section 66B, and section 40 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Looking at section 823, the definitive section of NGOs in Part F is very inclusive. It has every areas of life. It deals with kingship. It deals, it deals with schools, it deals with leadership and everything. For us at the Nigerian Network of NGOs, we would like to see the law responding to Article 10 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. For us, we do think that also Section 865 of the Kama Act would also now need to be reviewed to fall in line with the recommendations of um, the guideline as it were. Section 40, subsection 1, that is statement of compliance. We know ease of doing business is very, very important, and uh, CAC is helping us because you can register your business within 24 hours. However, one thing that I observe is that you cannot file an annual return as an individual. You need a lawyer. So since you can register your company independently. Why you cannot file an annual return? We think that the Registrar General, we, we think, and you are working very hard, but you need to improve and ameliorate the services of CSE. The proposed deletion of Section 831 on related associations is recommended, as this section prejudices the right of citizens and founders of NGOs to peaceful association and assembly as guaranteed by the 1999 Constitution. The amendment of section 838 sub 3, which deals with the stipulated penalty for the misappropriation of income of an association is recommended as the subsection in question offends gender sensibilities. After more submissions, the committee promised to compile a report for presentation to the Senate for more legislative action. Outside the National Assembly, the Committee on Science and Technology continued its oversight of agencies under its supervision. One of the agencies visited was the National Space Research and Development Agency, where the committee chairman sought to be furnished with some information on the operations of the agency. I would like to know your staff profile, how many people retired, when they retired, the replacements and all of that. For the past two years, have we engaged in new staff, the category of the staff, the unemployment, because I am sure that this office, um, the last time you employed a lot of people, and some of them are still going around with uh, employment letters. They have not been able to be captured by IPBIs. So what um, plans do you have to ensure that those children are absorbed in the system? 
Earlier in his address, the Director General gave a breakdown of financial releases and utilization for specific projects. Development of Environmental Space Technology Initiative conducting a cutting-edge research in development. You have five appropriated, five million was released, and five million, I mean, no penny was spended. I spend it and we still have the five million in our account. Space science and technology advocacy, you have 10 million released, 10 million was appropriated, and 10 million was released, and we have spent 9.9 .9 in that um, million in, that, uh, in the area of space science and technology advocacy. One of the highlights of the visit was an inspection of some of the agency's productions. At the National Biotechnology Development Agency, members were welcomed on arrival by the Director General, Professor Abdullahi Mustafa, and his management team. Development in biotechnology priority areas of food and agriculture. In her address, she charged the agency to brace up to the challenge of food insecurity in the face of data by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN stating that at least 9.2 Nigerians faced food crisis in May 2021, while a rise deficit of 3 million metric tons presently exists in Nigeria in the face of the ban on food importation. It is indeed very important that National Assembly be carried along in approvals of genetically modified organisms and crops for consumption in the country and because of the sensitive nature of this issue. The National Biotechnology Development Agency and its over 30 bioresource centers must therefore brace up to address this social economic gap in the country. Responding, the Director General disclosed that the agency has focused on developing solutions to some of Nigeria's agricultural challenges. One of it is that we have now commercialized beans, which is called cowpea. This commercialized beans is now in the market. Now we have proposed a solution that Nigerian farmers have gone back to the farm and they are enjoying the profit that they reap from the farming of this cowpea. We'll now take a break for our profile segment. Stay tuned for our Senator of the Week. Senator Sahabi al Hajiyaou represents Zamfara North Senatorial District. He holds a master's degree in business administration as well as a postgraduate diploma in management. He was elected to the Senate in 2007 under the ANPP and served till 2011, during which time he transferred loyalty to PDP. He contested again in the 2019 general election under PDP. The result of that election suggested that he, along with other PDP contestants, lost. However, a court ruling gave them victory, as a result of which he was returned to the Senate. In the 9th Senate, Senator Sahabi al was the Deputy Minority Leader, a position he abdicated as a result of his change to APC. He is also a member of several committees. His legislative interests include education, security, and agriculture. We have come to the end of this week's edition of Inside the Senate. Join us again next week for another edition and thanks for watching.